evening, everyone. Um, my name is Grace Hayek, and on behalf of the Glencoe Public Library, I'd like to welcome you to tonight's program on community solar in Glencoe. This program is being recorded. The video will be up on the library's YouTube channel by early next week. Um, the, the panelists will be very happy to answer questions at the end of the presentation. Um, please put your questions into the Q&A and I will ask them on your behalf after they're done with their part. A reminder that this is a Zoom webinar, so you can't be heard or seen by anyone, but we still very much welcome your questions. Before we get started, I'd like to put up a, a one question poll up on your screen. Here we go. Just asking how many people we have watching this tonight. Terrific. Now, again, thank you again for being here tonight. I'm going to hand you over now to Barney Gallagher. Barney, do you want to put on your, um, your audio and your visual? Um, Barney is the chair of the Glencoe Sustainability Task Force and the force behind tonight's program. He's going to briefly review what the Sustainability Task Force does, and then he'll introduce the first presenter, Cheryl Scott of the Metropolitan Mayor's Caucus. When Cheryl wraps up her portion of the presentation, she will be followed by Mark Pruitt, who is the principal of the energy consulting firm, the Power Bureau. After Mark has finished speaking, he will introduce the final speaker, Sharon Alagado of the Chicago-based MC Squared Energy Services. All right, Barney, take it away. Grace, thanks very much for the introduction. And thank you all for attending this uh, session uh, on community solar. Community Solar Program or project has been a project that the Sustainability Task Force has been actively advocating for for about the past year and a half. And I think uh, tonight's program is particularly timely considering Biden administration's announcement today that they've set a target for 50% of our energy coming from the sun by the year 2050. Uh, certainly that's an ambitious target. And in order to be successful at attaining that, we're going to have to be successful with programs like Community Solar. Uh, just one few words about Sustainability Task Force for those who you are not familiar with us. We're a volunteer group of about 14 residents of Glencoe. We're part of the village government and we provide direction and guidance to the government on issues of sustainability. We conduct our own programs like our recycling and drop off days, uh, this community solar programs like this. Um, if you've noticed the no idling signs in front of the schools, we are the culprits behind those signs. Um, and then education of the community, trying to uh, give the community the tools that we all need to create a more sustainable Glencoe. Um, tonight's program is, you know, we have really the, the full gamut of the folks who make the community solar program work. Um, so hopefully they'll be able to answer all of your questions. And it's my hope that you'll come away from tonight's program saying, asking one question, and that would be, why, why wouldn't I sign up for Community Solar? And with that, I would like to turn it over to uh, Mayor's Caucus Representative Cheryl Scott. The Mayor's Caucus is kind of the clearinghouse for the whole Community Solar program. Uh, and it's kind of the, the, the beginning of where this thing got going. So Cheryl, it's up to you. Thank you. And um, are you seeing my slides right now? Um, yes, we can see them. Yeah. Okay. Oh, thank you. Um, hi, I'm Cheryl Scott. I'm the Sustainability Specialist for the Mayor's Caucus, and I'll be giving you a brief overview about our organization and a little bit about the background of our Community Solar Clearinghouse Solution Program, or CS2 program for short. So if you haven't heard of the Metropolitan Mayor's Caucus, we're a membership organization of the 275 communities in the seven county Chicago region. We were founded in 1997 by the former Mayor Daly, and our main goal is to improve the quality of life for residents in the region through collaborating on public policy issues. Um, some of the topics that we cover are the environment, housing, age-friendly initiatives, and diversity, equity, and inclusion initiatives. The Community Solar Program, it aligns with our Greenest Region Compact, and that's a document of 49 higher level consensus sustainability goals that municipalities have agreed to work towards. Um, some of those goals are advanced renewable energy as an example. And we have 136 communities that are working toward that, including Glencoe that has adopted the Greenest Region Compact. 
Um, the CS2 program, as you can see on the slide, it aligns with the energy goal and the energy strategy, which is to collaborate to provide access to community solar. The community solar program, it also aligns with our 2021 climate action plan for the Chicago region, which we just released in July. And we're very excited about the plan because it's one of the first regional plans in the nation. Uh, the CS2 program, it also aligns with this document with the mitigation objective to decarbonize energy sources and with the specific strategy, which is to encourage renewable clean energy to be used um, such as through community solar. The CS2 communities that we have right now, um, we've got 13 of them and we have a few others that are going through the process. The program started, we had a pilot in September of 2020 with seven of the North Shore Electricity Aggregation Consortium communities, including Glencoe. And the pilot had scaled up um, a successful program in Oak Park. Uh, we have a few other communities participating that aren't in that consortium. And um, like I mentioned before, we have others that are in the process and um, we'll soon be adding a few more pins to the map as they complete the process. Um, so that's just a, a brief overview about the caucus and a little bit of background about why we're interested in offering this program to residents. Um, I'll just pass this along to Mark Pruitt of the Power Bureau. He is the program manager for CS2 and principal of the Power Bureau. Thank you, Cheryl. Um, and thank you uh, to our host this evening, uh, Grace Barney, and, and for all the good work that you do. Um, just bringing up Hopefully, do this correctly. If someone can give me an indication as to whether or not the screen uh, shows a slide. It does. Great, thank you. Um, in terms of introductions, as, as Cheryl laid out, um, we're here really because Metropolitan Mayor's Caucus decided they're gonna sponsor a program to introduce and facilitate community solar uh, for residents as well as uh, municipal governments in Northern Illinois. The program, uh, as you all indicated, is the CS Squared program, and I'm the, the program manager. So um, by way of background, uh, the Power Bureau is an energy consulting firm. Um, before I was uh, in the energy consulting business, I served as the first director of the Illinois Power Agency, which is a uh, utility regulator in Illinois that's responsible for um, not only uh, securing electricity uh, for the residential and small commercial co customers served by ComEd, but also uh, planning and uh, procuring renewable energy to meet the, to meet the state's renewable portfolio standard. So let's talk a little bit about community solar and, and why we structured the, the, the program uh, the, the way it is today and, and, and some of the aspects of, of uh, value that we think that consumers can, can gain from the program. Um, first is that there's a problem uh, we're trying to solve for. And that problem is that a lot of consumers don't have access to solar. Um, U.S. Department of Energy indicates uh, studies that roughly 80% of homeowners simply don't have access to solar. And it can be for a variety of reasons. They may be renters or they may live in a condo building where they don't have a, a direct roof access. Uh, they could have a, a poor quality roof. There could be a lot of tree shading uh, around their building so that they're not going to be able to generate a, an, an efficient amount of electricity, even if they put the panels on the roof. And for a lot of consumers, the initial cost of putting solar on their own homes uh, can be prohibitive. So in solving for this problem uh, in 2016, the state of Illinois uh, passed a, a new statute called the Future Energy Jobs Act. And in the Future Energy Jobs Act, the concept of community solar or, or shared solar came about to solve for this, uh, this barrier uh, to, to access solar. And the idea is, is, is a little bit different. So that's why we put a little schematic up here. So in community solar, we have three primary actors. There's, there's homeowners, there's a large community solar farm, you see that at the top, and then the utility over to the right. Community shared solar is, is, is kind of a process where you have individual homeowners and small businesses can group themselves together in what are called subscribers. And the subscribers can claim a portion of a large community solar farm. So instead of putting solar panels on their individual roofs, 
these subscribers have a certain number of panels or a certain amount of capacity uh, that is assigned to them in a large centralized community solar farm. Um, these farms are typically 10 to 20 acres in size and they're, they're pretty large. As the electricity is generated by these farms that have interest uh, from all the subscribers, that electricity is delivered to the, to the local utility, in this case, ComEd, and ComEd credits those subscribers with their portion of the electricity generated by the community solar farm. So you see it works in a circuit. We have subscribers who uh, indicate an interest in a community solar farm. The community solar farm generates electricity, sends it to ComEd. ComEd credits the subscribers for their portion of the community solar uh, generation uh, that is attributable to their subscription. So, okay, if, if this is allowed by state law, why did the, uh, the CS squared program need to come about? Well, we noticed a few things. Um, first was that there were a lot of companies that were going to make promotions, claims, and advertising around community solar. There are dozens of providers and, you know, some having $200 signing bonuses and, you know, lots of uh, direct mail, lots of social media, and for a short time, a lot of people knocking on doors, door-to-door uh, -to -door sales. So we felt that there was quite a bit of risk for consumers in this environment where this is a new way of, of purchasing electricity. It, it, it was a little foreign and wherever that those combination of variables come together, there's a little bit of risk for the consumers who might not really fully understand everything that they're that being presented. So in the risk category, we noticed that some of these offers, even though they had great, you know, flashy advertising, they had some downsides. They had uh, up to $200 termination fees, meaning that if I wanted community solar today, but a year from now, it wasn't a good fit for me. If I wanted to get out of that contract, I'd have to pay $200 termination fee. Or to even sign up, I'd have to have a minimum credit score. Or, you know, in, in some cases, I needed to sign over power of attorney for control of my utility account to the community solar developer. None of those are really in the interest of, of consumers. So the CS squared program was designed to bring about three primary elements. That's consistency, meaning everybody gets the same offer. Simplicity, very simple offer. You get to, you get a, a credit equal to 20% of your utility uh, supply uh, portion of your bill. And then consumer protections, no credit checks, no termination fees. So those are the things that were that we tried to create in the CS Word program, and, and we've delivered. And now, as Cheryl indicated, we, we have over a dozen communities that are participating and uh, another number of communities that are coming on board because this is really a very simple way for consumers to support the development of solar while saving a little bit of money. So what did we do in this uh, CS Word structure? Well, first we evaluated all of the offers. Um, we figured out the economics of what constitutes a fair project or a fair offer for, for residents. And then we also uh, worked with the Illinois Power Agency, the Illinois Commerce Commission and ComEd to identify what are all the requirements? What does a consumer need to do to get a community solar subscription? So we've been involved in this since 2018 uh, when, the, when the initial planning uh, for community solar started. After we did our evaluation, we went out and we negotiated with uh, four community solar providers to get access to 10 uh, community solar projects. Seven of those projects are, are constructed now, another three are under development. And under our negotiations, we set standard terms and conditions, we set a standard of consumer care, and we established prices. Then we set about to educate. And this is where we work with our uh, municipal partners like Glencoe where through a direct mail campaign and, and outreach, such as this evening's program, we help educate the consumers uh, in terms of what their opportunities are, where the value of the program is, and, and the steps necessary to become a community solar subscriber. We also standardized all the forms and documents. So in the program that's offered through the, through the CS Squared program in partnership with the, the Village of Glencoe, um, we have all electronic forms for enrollment, for billing, for, for all those purposes. So we really try to simplify as much as possible. And Sharon, uh, in the next presentation, will go through a lot of those details with you. And then lastly, our, our charter here is to, to manage the enrollments, to make this process simple, to answer questions, and to always be responsive to the residents. So we handle billing, 
uh, customer service, regulatory filings, monthly billing and reporting, we handle everything so that the municipality doesn't have to get involved in this directly. We handled it for our municipal partners. And how municipalities join, we again, try to make it very simple and your village has already made the commitment uh, through their participation in the North Shore Electricity Aggregation Program. Uh, they indicated interest, they formalized participation and did a bit of work to, to get the municipality up and, and, and program up and running. And then they're, they're assisting with outreach. So Glencoe and all of our municipal partners have been great. Um, and, and we think that it's worked out well for them and for the residents because the program delivers a, a good value and uh, it's very transparent and, and, and quite simple in, in its execution. So I thank you very much for your time and again for the invitation this evening. And I'd like to uh, turn this over to uh, Sharon who can walk through the mechanics of signing up for the program. Thank you. Great, thank you, Mark. You can just confirm that you see my screen, someone? I do see it. Okay, great, thank you. So just a little background of um, uh, MC Squared. Um, we are a Chicago-based uh, energy supplier. Um, and we've been in business for about 12 years. Uh, we service over 120 customers with a mix of residential, commercial, um, uh, you know, schools, educational, healthcare. Uh, residential typically is through um, via the community choice aggregation, um, which we serve over 50 plus municipal aggregations um, with electricity in Illinois. We do have the highest rating customer satisfaction rating on the ICC website. And we're well positioned to provide community solar from a administrative billing and customer service um, aspect. For the community solar program, uh, CS2 program, we do uh, the development and educational marketing materials. Um, we create the websites for the community solar programs in regards to enrollments, um, as Mark said, you know, uh, the simplicity of um, everything is online and via email. Um, we also execute the direct mailing campaigns and we work with the municipalities, um, including the village of Glencoe and in um, the direct mail and the postcards. We manage the billing process on behalf of the project developers as MC Squared is not an actual solar developer, but we partner with solar developers um, to, to manage their solar project, community solar projects. We provide uh, call center agents uh, to answer questions, um, but we also answer them internally. Um, and we provide, as, as Mark said, um, monthly metrics, information, um, to the municipalities. In regards to the uh, CS2 program process flow, the first step is um, prospective subscribers join the reservation list. This information includes account number, um, you know, name, email address, et cetera. This will give us the ability to analyze the accounts for eligibility. Um, and, and estimate the subscription size as well as estimate annual savings. Once we determine the eligibility, we will send out the enrollment offer emails and it will give instructions on how uh, a subscriber can enroll into the program. Then once the uh, customer is successfully enrolled, uh, they will start to receive the net metering credits for their share of the community solar uh, program or project on their ComEd bill. And then the last step is MC Squared will bill for the community solar developers 80% um, of that credit via an automated payment process, therefore leaving the consumer or subscriber 20% of the net metering credit. This is just an example of what the reservation looks like and the information we need in order to run that analysis as far as uh, estimated savings and, and um, maximize subscription size. We also provide FAQs um, to, to gain more knowledge and information regarding the program. 
This is a sample of what the enrollment offer email would look like. Um, as I stated, we estimate the subscription size um, or, or we um, project the subscription size, estimate what your net savings would be annually after the um, subscription fee payment, um, and then steps on how to enroll. So as far as the enrollment process, um, everything from the reservation list is auto-populated on the enrollment offer or on the enrollment page. Um, the consumer would just need to confirm the name, uh, the billing, review the docu and DocuSign subscription, the subscription agreement, the IPA disclosure, uh, which is um, in, um, intended for consumer protection and the auto pay agreement. Uh, they would then create a password and enter the payment information for auto pay and then just click submit. Here is an example of all the information that it, they, um, the, the customer would either confirm or enter um, during the enrollment process. The next step is the once the customer is fully subscribed, it is a two bill, uh, two stage subscription billing process. So, as I stated, the the customer would receive uh, start to receive the net metering credits for their share of the community solar project on their ComEd bill, and the next step would be MC Squared sending a separate monthly bill for the solar credits. Um, for 80% of the credit they receive on their ComEd bill, leaving the subscriber with 20% of that credit. And we also um, provide on the monthly statements um, some in environmental attributes as far as what they contributed during that month um, uh, for the CO2 emissions. This is an example of what a subscriber would see on their ComEd bill. It will be a new line item on their ComEd bill um, with renewable community supply details. It will not tie into necessarily the cycle, the billing cycle of the, uh, the ComEd bill, but it will just be on calendar generation months. It will state where uh, which project they're enrolled to. As Mark mentioned, there are multiple projects, community solar projects out there. So depending on um, what project, what the con subscriber was enrolled to, it will state on, um, on the ComEd bill. And then it'll state the generation amount. Uh, so their, the generation kilowatt hours is their share of the community solar project and we calculate and ComEd calculates the total credit uh, applied to their bill. And as Mark mentioned, it would be applied towards the supply portion of the ComEd bill. Then MC squared bills uh, for 80% of that credit. Um, so this is a sample MC squared bill. Um, we, we indicate what we um, were notified as far as the credit received on the ComEd bill, um, as well as um, their share of the generation and the what they they saved that month for community solar. So in this example, the subscription fee, since the credit was fifty three dollars and eighty four cents, um, MC squared billed eighty percent, which is forty three oh seven, and for this particular uh, billings. Uh, billing cycle, the, the subscriber saved $10.77. MC Squared utilizes a US-based customer care um, center um, for any inquiries, questions, um, and we do extensive um, training with these agents. Um, but again, we also answer questions internally um, and uh, responses typically 24 hours, um, we respond to inquiries. And then anything that um, may escalate will typically go to myself. 
And again, we thank you for your time and your, um, uh, your questions. And I'll hand it back over to Grace. Thank you, Grace. Thanks. Thanks so much, all, all of you, for um, a terrific presentation. Between the three of you, you really covered a great deal. Um, we do have, um, if, if everyone would like to put their, all the panelists would like to put their um, uh, audio and visual on, um, we, we can get started. Oh, there's Cheryl. All right, I'm going to get started with the first question. Um, looking at the winter crisis in Texas last winter, um, does sol community solar help improve our resilience or is um, the infrastructure also subject to extreme weather as part of the existing grid? Um, I think, Mark, you might have an answer to that. Um, Certainly. Um all of the community solar projects that are part of our program are located in Northern Illinois. So they're subject to the same weather uh, extremes as all the other generators in Northern Illinois. What I would say to your question of resilience is that typically we see greater resilience and reliability on uh, regional grids that have a more diverse uh, set of uh, generators. And uh, that's what we get with community solar. We're, we're having new generation coming into Northern Illinois. They're smaller units and they're more distributed. So all of those factors do uh, tend towards enhancing the reliability of the regional grid. Now, to, to, to be honest right now, we only have a few of these projects, uh, but over time, as the number of projects grow, we would expect to see greater resilience and reliability for the Northern Illinois grid. Excellent, thank you. Uh, another question is, um, I don't know who would be best to answer this one. Is there any reason why we couldn't or shouldn't install solar panels as well as subscribing to community solar? Thoughts, anyone? Um, I can take this, Grace, thank you. Um, it, Typically, typically we advise, um, you know, it, it should be one or the other. I don't believe you're um, precluded to join a community solar program um, if you have solar panels installed, uh, but it, it might not yield the same savings as if you had not installed community uh, a solar panel. So, it, the community solar program and CS2 program isn't is typically in, intended for um, consumers or residents that that do not have the installation uh, option. Thank you. Uh, here's another one. Uh, does the current energy bill in Springfield have an impact on the community solar program going forward? I might be able to take that one, uh, Grace. Yes, the, the current energy bill um, would uh, very rapidly uh, increase the, the funding and the availability of community solar uh, throughout the state of Illinois. Okay, let's, let's hope it passes then. Um, thank you. Uh, next question. Uh, I think Sharon, you kind of answered this, but maybe it wouldn't hurt to, to uh, state it again. Um, someone would like to know, how long does it take from the reservation list to the enrollment offer and then from enrollment to the first credit? What's the time frame on the process? So it just depends on the timing of when they actually get on the reservation list to where the, where the current projects are at. Um, so for example, currently are the community solar projects we uh, work with are full. However, we do have another project coming online in October. So we haven't, we have started to um, send out offer emails to those already on the wait list um, or that haven't already enrolled uh, for this next project. So although we typically send it on a weekly basis, maybe twice a week. We review anyone new on the reservation list, and then we um, typically send it out once or twice a week. Um, so from a timing perspective of when they would receive their credits, it would be after the solar project is activated. So this next project is going to be anticipated to be activated in October. 
Um, so once it is activated, we'll enroll their accounts with ComEd and then they should see credits on their bill, one to two bill cycles. Um, they should start to see their credits. So it really depends on um, you know, where they are at on the wait list and um, the reservation list, I'm sorry, and um, uh, you know, where the projects are at at that time. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, and I'm not sure if this has an answer yet, but um, how many Glencoe residents are currently enrolled and how many have submitted reservations and are waiting for enrollment offices offers? Um, do, we, do we know that ballpark figure? Um, I, I looked it up, Sharon, you have um, the most recent numbers. <laughs> Yes, let, um, I'm sorry, I didn't, I should have had that um, information readily available, but um, if we can go on to the next question and I can well, look that up as, as, we, uh, as we discuss. You know, Sharon, I have the report from uh, Tuesday. Is that the oh, most okay. current? Okay, yeah. um, Samantha sent it to me. So yeah. I, I went ahead and pulled it up. Uh, okay. In Glencoe, we had uh, uh, 117 accounts were entered onto the wait list. Um, and 38 of those have been enrolled so far. That leaves 94 that are remaining on the wait list today. Yes, and um, thank you, Mark. Thanks for having that readily available. Um, we do send out offer email. So we are up to date on, uh, on the reservation list. So it just depends on, um, you know, although we send out offer emails, not everyone does proceed with enrollment. So, uh, you know, we do, especially with the North Shore um, reservation list, we are up to date. You know, we might, like I said, we review it once or twice a week um, to see any new people that have come on the reservation list. We'll, we'll send them enrollments right away. But, um, you know, offer emails don't always convert to actual enrollments because, um, you know, whether they um, initially are interested or, and then they just don't understand the program. And that's why this, this is a great platform to educate uh, residents. Um, you know, it doesn't necessarily convert to a, an actual enrollment per, um, moving forward. Hey, are there any limits on the number of households that can sign up for the program? Could it be 100% of Glencoe? There, if, if we have the availability, so each, there is a maximum um, capacity to a community solar project. The max for each project is two megawatts. Um, so it just depends on, um, and that's why there is a reservation list because um, a community solar project, project can get filled. Um, but on average, I would say, um, Re there's probably about 300 residents per project that that can accommodate um, a community solar project because there is a max size. And that's why we, we do state, you know, it is a first come first serve basis. Um, you know, you want to enroll and because at some point there there could be availability won't be for another couple years because there is time to actually build um, and develop these projects. So, um, you know, it's just, it just depends on, you know, where the projects are at and the time frame the um, resident or customer gets on the reservation list. Thank you. Uh, Gary would like to know, um, is the solar credit that a consumer would be provided based on their past usage? Is, is the benefit to consumers basically 20% of their historic electric usage? Their, their subscription size is based on their historical usage. So every customer is, and that's the, the information we do, we use with their account number. Um, we pull their historical usage and we try to um, size their subscription to um, at least 100% of their usage to cover a, um, about 100% of their usage. Um, but ComEd does have, there are some limitations on how much you can actually subscribe into community solar project. Um, so that, in that aspect, we do tie the subscription size to their usage. However, 
their credits will all depend on what the community solar project generates and what that, so their subscription size, if you um, can think about it as a percentage of what their share is on the community solar project, that's how their generation credits are calculated is based off their subscription size. So you can expect, um, you know, a higher credit uh, during the summer months, as typically the solar panels generate more energy during the sunnier months and then probably lower in the winter months, but it will vary on a month monthly basis. Thank you. Uh, Lawrence would like to know, um, um, do we ex expect a new project to come online, say, every three or four months to accommodate new subscribers? Depending, it, it all depends on um, the demand. So currently we are working with a community solar developer that has one more project coming online as we have already filled multiple projects for this community solar developer. Um, so we do have one coming online in October and there is a potential uh, for another project. Um, so it, it really depends on the solar developers and the funds to um, build more community solar projects. If I could take a, a quick crack at that, um, there were 75, uh, roughly 75 community solar projects approved for Northern Illinois under state statute. Um, we have access to and commitments from the developers of 10 of those projects uh, to provide volumes from those farms to our program. We're currently under negotiations with another three developers to bring on uh, additional community solar farm uh, capacity. So as these projects are built out, um, uh, they'll become available through the program. I don't, I, I can't tell you that it's a, a regular every three to four months, another project will be available. They, they tend to operate in a, uh, in a construction pattern where most of the construction um, is executed during the spring, uh, summer, and fall, as opposed to winter. So I think that you probably will see uh, more projects coming online, uh, maybe uh, this fall, and then another big, uh, larger amount uh, this coming spring. All right, thank you. Uh, someone uh, would like to know a little bit more about um, what, what's the basis for setting consumer net savings at 80%? Is it because solar energy is 20% less expensive to generate and deliver? Um, um, no, uh, actually that 80-20 uh, split came as a result of the competitive procurement process that the mayor's clock has supplied. We, uh, we sent out a, uh, a request for proposals to all of the community solar developers asking them, all right, well, if we gave you the opportunity to sell uh, your subscriptions to residential customers, how much of the billing credits would you be willing to split with the customer? Some uh, developers said, well, well, we'll give the customer 5%. Others said, we'll give them 10%. Um, and uh, eventually we ended up with developers who were willing to split 80%, uh, I'm sorry, to grant 20% of the bill credits to the consumer. And that was the best deal available. So that's what we have set as the benchmark for our program. And uh, that's, the, uh, that's, the, that's how that 80-20 split came about. Thank you. Thank you. That's, that's interesting. Um, these last two questions that I've got um, are kind of related. Um, uh, Phyllis wants to know what's a typical dollar amount savings for a household? And George, is, George asks, are you saying that my monthly total bill, ComEd plus MC squared for electricity will be less than I pay ComEd now and how much less? Um, Sharon, do you wanna take a first crack at it? Yes, of course. Um, so on average, it really depends on the customer's usage. So, you know, I would say a, um, a multi-unit uh, like condo building or apartment building will, they use you less, so they will also probably save less than, let's say, you know, a 3,000 square foot single family home. So um, it, it would definitely vary. Um, and that's something that we provide you with during the enrollment offer email is we provide an estimated annual savings 
um, if you proceed with enrolling on the program. Um, and then to answer George's question, um, yes, in paying both the ComEd bill as well as the MC squared bill, the, there is a savings because had you not been on the community solar program, you would not be receiving a community solar credit. Um, and so although you pay 80% back to MC squared um, as the sol community solar projects billing administrator, uh, you do keep 20% of that credit providing um, you are enrolled on the community solar program. So uh, you would, you either save, you know, 20% of that credit um, or there is no savings had you not enrolled on the community solar program. But yes, it is savings of the 20% 20, 20 of the net uh, meeting credits or solar credits that you receive on your COD Med bill. Yeah. Uh, to put a, a kind of a, a statistical number around that, uh, a typical uh, single family ComEd home will generate on a, on a full subscription about $500 worth of net metering credits on an annual basis today. Uh, a co consumer who keeps 20% of that $500 is going to show a net savings of about $100 per year. Larger consumers have larger subscriptions, so the net savings will be larger for those larger consumers. All right, thank you for answering that incoming question. Um, terrific. Okay, two more questions, and then I think we'll be uh, wrapping it up. Uh, one last one is, um, uh, is there any scenario that you can envision where cons the consumer ends up receiving no benefit or savings after signing up? Is that possible? I have not seen that thus far. Um, again, this, this program is intended to save money, um, but as, as um, Mark had stated, you know, the, we, are, we are here for also consumer protection. So if the consumer feels that they are not receiving a savings or does not understand the program, they can uh, cancel the, their subscription at any time with no termination fees. But yes, there will, let's say, um, you know, they happen to not receive any credits on their ComEd bill because let's say that there was an issue with the, the solar panels or uh, something like that. Then MC squared, because it's always 80% of the credit, if it's zero, then they will not be billed a subscription fee. So um, it should always, the, the subscriber can always tie it back, the, the MC squared, bill for 80% of the subscription fee, they can always tie it back to what they received on their ComEd bill. Excellent, and, thank you. Oh, go ahead. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. I, I was just gonna state the reason why we went for the, the percentage split was to always ensure that two things. One is that the resident always got their full credits on the ComEd bill first before paying anything, right? We. We always want people to realize the savings first and then pay for the savings. And then secondly, um, to reduce the risk uh, to the consumer that, you know, the only way you go to zero is if the solar uh, farm is not operating, in which case, okay, you're not charged anything. You didn't gain anything either. Um, but you're not responsible for paying any extra to get that solar farm back up and operating. So you're really held harmless. You only, it's really a pay as you go or save as you go uh, arrangement. And, and that was purposeful in, in the program design. Thank you. For that oh, I'm go sorry. Ahead. Go ahead, Sean. And I think we just, you know, the program, we just wanted to also just be transparent. So, um, you know, you see clearly what you received on your ComEd bill and um, that equates to, you know, what the subscription fee and what MC squared uh, bills you for it. So. Um, I think was also intended for transparency as well. The, the two bill process at least. Okay, thank you. And final question from Linda. Um, if a small community like Glencoe has 94 people on the wait list and we're part of a consortium with many larger towns, it sounds like the known planned projects will fill up soon. Um, is there anything that we can do if we want to actually start using community solar sooner, especially knowing that, that our mailboxes are filled with promos for other offers. 
uh, you know, it, you got to sign up. I mean, we've, we've, I think, carried the ball as, as, as far as we can, except for clicking the, the, uh, the, the sign up button uh, for folks. Um, I think that programs such as this raise awareness and people need to hear this a couple of times. This is kind of like when retail energy supply became available back in 2011. Um, a lot of uh, consumers said, oh, I don't know how to buy electricity. I don't want to do it. And it was the municipalities that came forward with municipal aggregation. They negotiated a deal. They offered that deal to the residents and the residents could save money. I think it's probably going to be something the same here where the municipalities are leading. They're doing the due diligence. They're making this more simple for the consumer. And uh, yeah, there can be a lot of offers in the, in the, uh, in the mailbox, but this is an offer that was designed with input directly from municipalities. It was tested by the municipalities on their own facilities first and then expanded out. So there's, there's a lot of due diligence that's been conducted here. And I, I think that if people kind of dig in, invest that, I, I think it's maybe 10 minutes to go through the, the excellent information that MC Squared has put together for the program, as well as the Metropolitan Mayor's Caucus. They can see that this is really a, a great way to test out solar without having to make a major investment. Excellent, thank you. And on that, that uh, Grace, hopeful Grace. and stirring note, I, oh, Barney, do you wish to like speak? Yeah, just one last program note. Uh, yeah. First, thanks to all the panelists. Uh, it was great, we really appreciate it. Secondly, to the attendants, um, two things. First, if you have, if you think of other questions or have questions you, you, you would like further discussion about, please feel free to get in touch with me. Also, if, you're more, if you'd like to learn more about the STF and what you might be able to do to participate with us, uh, the best way to get in touch with me is simply call the Village Hall and tell them that you're interested in learning more about the STF or have questions about solar, uh, the community solar program, and they will put you in touch with me. So with that, thank you very much. Thank you, everyone. Thank you to our participants and as to our panelists, of course, as well. Thank you very much and good night. Thank you. Thank you, Grace. Thank you, Barney. Good night. Thank you all. Thanks. Good night, all.